So BuzzFeed did the story about movies where the stars had trouble filming certain scenes. So one of them was like Kate Winslet said that she had to pee in the water filming Titanic because it was just too much trouble to like get out of the water, dry off, find a toilet. Mm -hmm. So she was like, you know, screw it. She's just going to pee where she's wherever she's floating. So that's what she ended up doing. So that was the gist of the BuzzFeed article about like, you know, little tidbits about movies that you didn't know, like. Harry Potter, the the food that was out. They shot those scenes like days in a row and they just left the food sitting there. So by like the fourth day, that food stunk mm -hmm. and they were shooting the, the, the scene while it was just like, it smelled. Like it smelled really, really bad. It was um, real food? I thought it was like plastic food. No, it was real food. That oh. was the stupid thing that they did. Yeah, so that was um, kind of dumb. Anyway, so... One of the things they had on there was Pretty Woman. And I haven't seen that movie in a million years. Like, I I have, like, memories of, like, certain scenes, like the scene where she goes shopping and she's like, big mistake. But that's about all I remember. Mm -hmm. um, so they show the scene where Julia Roberts is laying on the ground and she's watching I Love Lucy. And she's supposed to be, like, laughing, like, outrageously. But let's face it, I Love Lucy is just not funny. It's cer certainly, like, a certain generation. It just isn't funny. But she was supposed to be laughing. So... Gary Marshall, I think that's the director. Gary Marshall, I think, directed Pretty Woman. Mm -hmm. um, start tickling her feet to make her laugh. And so they talked about that. And I was like, I don't remember that scene. I don't remember this movie. Let me let me watch this movie. So over the weekend, I watched Pretty Woman. And honestly, I was horrified. I was completely horrified. Like, <laughs> I can't believe that I thought it's like, you know, when you when you look at a movie like that in today's lens, mm -hmm. it's like, oh, my God, it's OK. So it's the story about, you know, like this prostitute has to be freed from the trappings of her life by this man who like when you see him, he's rude. He doesn't say much. He has no charisma. He's I mean, it's Richard Gere, so he's good looking, but that's about it. And you're like. What's the attraction, you know? And he spends his whole time like grooming her and forcing her to adapt to his ideas about how she should behave. Mm -hmm. Like he chooses her food at the restaurant. He forces her to buy new clothes. He's like, he's so controlling. It, it's it's one red flag after another. Because she's an employee of his. Right. But the, here's the thing. In real life, if, if you're a prostitute, and, and then it's the idea that prostitutes need saving. You know, it's like, Women now choose to be prostitutes. It's not like back in the 40s where they were forced into prostitution, you know, for whatever reason. I mean, most women, sex workers are sex, they're sex workers. They choose to work in that industry. There's a lot of money in that industry to be had. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so it's like all these scenes where he's totally controlling what she eats, what she wears, all that stuff. I understand that he's paying for her time. Why would she fall in love with that? Because to me that he sounds like a controlling psychopath. Because all you women fall in love with that type of guy. With a controlling guy? <laughs> yeah. No, we don't. Yes, you do. It's Every single a, one of mm -mm. you. Yeah, you go with the bad guy. You go with the guy that... No, no, that's, no. That's not yeah. a bad... Listen, bad boy is different. Bad boy is somebody that's like a little on the edge. He's not very traditional. Mm -hmm. But this isn't bad boy. This is like psychological. Like he's a controlling... He's a control freak, but like unhealthy. I don't I don't get it. And I was watching it. I was like, and I didn't understand why she had fallen in love with him at like at any point in it. It was just I don't know. It was bad. So I just love that you're so against any love story. <laughs> well, this is but that's that's what I'm saying. Like it is a, when you break it down, it is a love story. It's romantic. It's, it's a rom com. It's the definition of romantic comedy, and you're so against romance <laughs> that you find fault in everything. I'm definitely against romance, but I'm really against romance with a girl who chooses to be a prostitute and a control freak. Like that, I'm against that type of rom com. But anyway, mm. so it led me. It led me to go. You know, am I crazy? So of course, I googled it to see like if there's other people that are like not cancel pretty woman because you know you gotta it's it's a it's a classic movie and it has a lot of scenes that are kind right. of like beautiful and charming um but it, it like i was thinking there must be tons of other movies that in today's today's time 
Like, for example, what's that movie where it's Griffin Dunn, he's in the back of a cab, and he loses, he has $20 to pay the cab, and it flies out the window, and that's what starts the action of his, like, horrendous night, where he couldn't pay the cab, so the cab driver leaves him in some crappy neighborhood, and, like, mm. you know, hilarity ensues, and all these things happen. Well, you know, that movie would have been ruined if anyone had a cell phone. Like, that movie was in probably in the 80s. So if the movie was now and literally anybody had a cell phone, the movie would have been over in the first five minutes. <laughs> yeah, because you could call the cab company and get them to stop. Right. Oh, no, you could you could pay on your Apple Pay. Mm -hmm. And if not, you can call a friend and be like, hey, I don't have any cash on me. Could you come meet me or pick me up or something? Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like, so I looked it up to see like other movies that people were like, this is so unrealistic now. Um, so there's a couple of them I thought were really interesting. Like, okay, remember that scene in Breakfast Club? Breakfast Club is fine. Like, it holds up over time. But there's one scene that should have been cut. Like, people are saying they should still edit it out, like, now to this day when they re the panty re scene. rerun it. The panty scene where he's he looks and he, he look, like, looks up her, mm -hmm, her, her panty. skirt. Right. Yeah. Like, without asking consent, like, without her consent. <laughs> right. So people, people, I'm telling you, it's the internet. So mm -hmm. people were like, that's a problem. Um, they didn't like You've Got Mail because, again, supposed to be like a 90s rom-com, two people connect in a chat room. But after Catfish, and you know it's the only thing that MTV runs other than Friends. So after Catfish, it's like, this seems really sinister. Like the whole idea of, like, basically, he <laughs> catfishes. I mean, it turns out like they're they're... They're normal people, yeah, they, and they end up falling they, in they love. They fall in love, and they live happily ever after. Yeah, but remember, like it's predicated on so many, like this bed of lies. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. So it is kind of catfishy. Um, the other movie people didn't like was American Beauty, which obviously, uh, first of all, Kevin Spacey being the dad in that, mm -hmm. being being the cis straight dad is just like okay first of all who are you kidding mary but more importantly remember he becomes infatuated with a 16 year old and he's fantasizing about this teenager and he's having a midlife crisis so you know he's probably in his 40s in this movie fantasizing about a 16 year old mm -hmm. right that's kind of awkward um and finally 16 candles which this made me uncomfortable back then. It really did. So they have this one character, Long Duck Dong. Remember the Chinese right. foreign exchange student? Okay, so not only is it completely like this racist stereotype, but they show him like violating a drunk woman without her consent. You know, every time he walks into a scene, they bang a gong. Mm -hmm. Like it's, I mean, it is really offensive. So this can't be the only movie from the 80s or 90s that people are like, no. I think people with keyboards are going to kill every movie. I think you can break down every <laughs> movie that has ever come out and find something in it that offends somebody. I think we're not, you're, you're going to make it so we don't have nice things anymore, that we don't have movies. The only right. movie that is going to be left is Marvel. That's right. it. <laughs> because you can say it was a superhero and that's what superheroes do, but you, for regular people movie, you're not going to have them anymore. Right. You're right. Well, Rob says he's talking about pretty woman. He says um, she's being paid and women love money. Right. And I guess, you know, right. She is being paid. That is 100 percent true. But her falling in love with him after he's a control freak. That's the part that I take issue with. Um, David Seeley says he was always confused by that movie as well, but mm. probably for other reasons, because Richard Gere was hot. <laughs> and David was like, why am I attracted to the wrong yeah, right. Um, not the wrong, but the you know whatever. <laughs> um, and uh, JP for life eighty seven says you're crazy, but I still love you. And what if the what if the phone flew out the window? Mm -hmm. Oh, and he says, how about Milk Money with Ed Harris? Yeah, the, nobody saw that though. Yeah, I don't know that movie very yeah, well. Um, then... Rob says Blazing Saddles holds up over time, and he's a hundred percent right because the fart scene that I thought like oh, I was like a kid, like so farting around a campfire is funny, still funny. That's the only scene that that people with keyboards cannot destroy now, though. Every other scene in right. that movie, you're going to have an issue with. Forget comedies. There's never going to be another comedy made. Right. Ever. I mean, if you watch Family Guy now, Quagmire yeah. just walks around. 
<laughs> he can't say anything anymore. That's true. That's a very good point. Right. <laughs> totally. His whole, he just, he yeah. follows people around like a puppy. He doesn't yeah, even he, talk. His whole thing was all like sex and misogyny. And right. remember when, remember he, um, it was a whole thing with like sex trafficking where he had those four women mm-hmm. that he like, um, I think there's a scene where he has four of them and they're, they go, they go running and he's like, ah, oh, you know, I, I freed them from a container. They have to come back. Really <laughs> offensive. Like totally. Off- funny, right. You know? 